Hi everyone, my name is Prabs Johal and it's an honour to be a part of this conversation on racism within the UK. I can share numerous stories of uh, experiencing racism directed towards me growing up here in the United Kingdom. Um, I remember being told um, that my accent was too posh for someone who was born in India and that I don't really sound like the rest of them. Um, but also I remember being told by educational professionals that I should not pursue my career choice because I wouldn't be taken seriously due to the colour of my skin. I went on um, to train legally and um, trained as a barrister here in the UK and since I've had the opportunity to uh, be in legal tribunals across three different geographical jurisdictions and have firsthand also witnessed how um, the criminal justice systems that are created to protect and to help and stand for the vulnerable are actually not adequate enough. They're not representative enough to be able to do so. Um, I think even though I have my own stories of pain and trauma growing up, I think they don't even come close to um, the pain and trauma of many of my brothers and sisters that have experienced injustice and suffered for, for many years. I think in the past uh, few weeks, my husband and I have been deeply moved and impacted by the tragic death of George Floyd, but also the many other stories that have surfaced since. I, since those um, things have uh, sort of surface in the media we at home have been having really hard conversations digging deep within our own hearts for signs of privilege and prejudice that we might deal with them we've been um, speaking to people family and friends we've been educating ourselves by watching documentaries and learning about the history um, but also we've been trying to weep with those who are weeping by standing um, and going to peaceful protests prayerfully standing alongside many of those who are hurting but also standing on behalf of those as well. I think in this time and hour there's a firstly a massive call to pray. Um, it's interesting to me that the word tells us to not be alarmed at these things when people group are rising up against people group, when there are many shakings that are happening around us, that we are to know and expect these signs um, and sort of know what they um, lead to as well. But what gives me real hope is um, that we can stand on God's promises. And I do believe there's a trumpet call to pray in this season more than ever before. I'm encouraged by the passage in uh, the in second book of Chronicles where God says, that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, cry out in prayer to me, turn from their ways, then I will hear them and I will heal their land. So yes, I think firstly, there's a massive call to pray um, and seek the face of God like never before in this hour. I think secondly, there's also um, practical change that needs to happen. Uh, I think that there needs to be organisational change. I think um, there needs to be representation at seats and tables of power. Um, I think policies and, and legislation need to be um, updated and changed to be representative. Um, and I think, yeah, we need to keep this conversation alive. But I think also thirdly, um, the interesting thing for me is Paul's writings to many of the churches in Corinthians, to the Philippians, um, to the Ephesians, he would exhort and encourage them to pursue unity and keep the bond of peace. So I do believe, thirdly, that there is a huge need for the church to pursue unity in this hour, to put aside our differences and embrace the diversity and to celebrate um, the, the unity that, that can come and that the world would know that we are his. Um, so yes, I, I hope and pray that change, real long lasting change happens, but I hope also that we would keep the conversation alive.